Mmm, I'm thirsty. I don't think you should drink that. It looks bad for you. Nonsense. It makes me feel great. Smarter. More aggressive. I feel like I could. Like I could. Like I could. Take, Take on, on the, the world. world. Look, Hoagie, it's a hamster. Just what I need for dissection lab tomorrow. I think I need that for the band, Laverne. You know, like we could bite its head off or whatever. Hands off that hamster. Friend of yours, Bernard? He belongs to Weird Ed Edison. And it looks like he's brought us a note. It's from my old friend, Green Tentacle. He says that Purple Tentacles mutated into an insane genius. And Dr. Fred's going to kill them both. I thought I was free of Dr. Fred and those crazy Edisons forever. But now, I know that I must go... Back to the mansion! Okay, we'll spread out commando style. Laverne, you go secure the area behind those double doors. Hoagie, you take care of upstairs reconnaissance. I'll maintain Command HQ here, in the lobby. What are we looking for? We've got to find where Dr. Fred is holding the tentacles. This better not take too long. I've got an anatomy final tomorrow. And I've got a show to set up later tonight. If I'm late, I don't get to test the drums. If I know Dr. Fred, he's got the tentacles tied up in his secret lab. Question is, Where's his secret lab?
It looks broken, but there's something in the coin return. Out of order. Why should I push it? I don't have time for that now. I'm on a mission. Looks like Dr. Fred wearing a powdered wig. Handsome in a way, but I'm glad he eventually accepted his hair loss. I don't know the combination. I don't know the combination. I can't push it in any farther. I'd best not mess with it. I have three just like it at home. I'd best not mess with it. I'd best not mess with it. I don't want to carry those people around in my wallet. Aha! A secret passage. This is all too easy. Laverne, how'd you get upstairs? Am I upstairs? I got lost. Seen any tentacles? What's a tentacle? Oh, just something I whipped up in my spare time. Made good pets, actually. Until one of them tried to take over the world. Had to tie the little buggers up in the basement. Good thing you told us that. Yeah, Bernard wanted us to set them free. Thank God you weren't that stupid. Did you say Bernard? Okay, you're free to go. Thanks, Bernard. Yes, thank you, naive human. Now I can finish taking over the world. <laughs> Wait! Oh, yeah. Now I remember. He's incredibly evil, isn't he? Uh, I'll try to talk him out of it. Well, what possible harm could one insane mutant tentacle do? Leaping lab rats! Dr. Fred! What have you done this time, you meddling milk toast? Now Purple Tentacle is free to use his evil mutant powers to take over the world and enslave all humanity! Whoops! Our only hope now is to turn off my sludge magic machine! and prevent the toxic mutagen from entering the river. Isn't it a little late for that, Doctor? Of course. That's why I'll have to do it. Yesterday! To the time machine! This is all your fault, Bernard. Behold, children! The Chronogen! Da, can't you just send Bernard? No, you must all go to increase the odds that one of you will make it there alive. Have any people ever been hurt in this thing? Of course not. This is the first time I've ever tried it on people.
Well, I'll be. Bernard, float over here so I can punch you. This must be that Woodstock place Mom and Dad are always talking about. What could it all mean? I don't know. I don't want to know. <laughs> Die. <laughs> Die. We may not live to see yesterday. I'm sure Dr. Fred wouldn't have done this if it weren't safe. After all, he is a doctor. It works! I can't believe it! And they said Imitation Diamond wasn't good enough. Uh-oh. Cheap mail order jewels. What happened to Hokey and Laverne? I knew I should have bought a real diamond. Are they alive? My dials say that the larger specimen landed 200 years in the past, and the other is stuck 200 years in the future. Well, hurry up and bring them back. I will, as soon as I get a new diamond. Then all your buddies have to do is plug in their respective chronogons and... Plug them in? Where is Hoagie going to find an electrical outlet 200 years in the past? Yes, well, he'll be needing my patented super battery then, won't he? Now, where did I put those patented super battery plans of mine? Plans? How are we going to get Hoagie plans? Don't worry me with details, boy. Just help me find the plans. They're in this house somewhere. Now what am I going to do? I think I made myself perfectly clear. Step one, find plans. Step two, save world. Step three, get out of my house. Let's get cracking. I'm surprised I ever got out of there alive. I don't think it's much use without a diamond. What? Why would I want to flush that down the toilet? There's nothing to get. I don't want to cause any more trouble. I don't want to cause any more trouble. I don't want to cause any more trouble. It can't do anything without a new diamond. Maybe I put them upstairs. That's got to be it. Upstairs! There, it's off. But it's too late now. To do. It's Dr. Fred's design for a super battery. It's capable of storing up to one gigavolt with a charging time of only 0.01 seconds. Wow! I've got the plans. Quick, we have to flush them to Hoagie. 
How did you get over there? My ingenious super battery design, please. You really flushed them. Yes. Down the toilet. No, through time. Using the highly sophisticated time flux hydraulic vortex chamber I've installed in each chronogen, you can flush small inanimate objects to each other through time. Flush small inanimate objects to each other through time. Hello? Dr. Fred, can you hear me? Drat. Did you hear something? No. Let's see if what's-his-name catches on. Oh, great. I'm stuck in colonial times, tentacles are taking over the world, and now the toilet's backing up. Ogie! Come over here! It's your old pal, Dr. Fred! Dr. Fred? How'd you get in there? I want you to pick up those plans you see in the chronogen, Hoagie. Bring them to Red Edison. He's my great, 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 great grandfather. He'll know what to do. You need the plans to make a super battery so you can plug in your chronogen. Okay, if you say so, Bernard. Good boy. Does he have any experience with electronics? Um, well, I once saw him take 3,000 volts directly through his head without batting an eye. Didn't he pass out? Well, he was already passed out when it happened. Time for me to save the world, I guess. Mmm, kumquats. I don't wanna. Huh, this door appears to be locked. Nah, it stinks. Grody. Huh, this door appears to be locked. Soon all the power of the heavens will be mine! All mine! If only we had some nasty weather! Making it dirtier won't help. That would not be respectful. Besides, I might get caught. What's up? Don't feel like talking, huh? Vow of silence or something, probably, right? Well, that's cool. I have something for Red Edison. Do you know where I could find him? Great hat, man. I know some dudes in a band who'd eat roaches for hats like that. They're called Insensitive Spittoon. Ever hear of them? They play at the Black and Blue Sound Pit in the city a lot. Well, nice talking to you, dude.
Yo. Hello. Are you petrified of public speaking? No, I'm freezing. Why don't you build a fire? Well, I keep asking Jefferson to build a fire, but he won't. Says he needs the log for posterity and won't part with it. You mean it's like a symbol of growth or something? I don't get any respect around here. Why, I bet if George I spent the winter in Valley Forge, Washington was cold, we'd get some heat in here. What are you guys doing in here? We're writing a... a, a, a writing the... We're drafting a constitution for the United States. Don't say draft. You'll only make me colder. Wimp. Why don't you have some hot coffee? Oh, I can't stand coffee. It makes me irritable and want to bang my head against the walls. Whoa, I can relate. Well, please don't do it around here. Awesome blanket there, dude. Thank you. It was given to me by my dear old colorblind Aunt Hattie. Shouldn't you guys be working instead of just sitting there? Writer's block. We can't think of any um, amendments or anything, so we put a suggestion box over there. I don't suppose you have any br brilliant ideas? You could guarantee the right to free speech. Hmm, free speech? No, that'll never work. How come you sign your name so big? Astigmatism. Really? Let me see your palms. All right. The, the, the truth is that a friend once told me that women go c crazy over guys with a big signature. Well, I gotta go, dude. Hey, tall, dark, and spiffy. My name's Hoagie. Well, how quaint. I am, of course, Thomas Jefferson, noted scholar, musician, horseman, student of the sciences, member of the bar. Oh, sure. I've heard of you, dude. Dude, is that like the Constitution? Right now, it's just a Constitution, I'm afraid. We hit a slight creative block right after the preamble. That's why we've put up a suggestion box over there. What's in the can, Tommy? Thomas. My name is Thomas, and this, my chubby friend, is a time capsule filled with remembrances of our time to be revealed 400 years hence. So, how's the time capsule going? I'm sorry to say that except for my log, we haven't got a thing. Dude, I loved your work on the Declaration of Independence. Ah, thank you. What was your favorite part? I like the we the people part. That's not in the Declaration of... Say, that's not bad. Maybe we can use it. Could you start a fire, please? I'd love to oblige you, young man, but I can't. This is the only log, and I'm saving it for posterity. How can you let Hancock suffer like that? A real man is warmed by the fires of his spirit. You should listen to Washington relate his experiences at Valley Forge and take heed. Has anyone ever told you you're a very snappy dresser? Why, yes. I studied at Virginia Coat and Technical, where I majored in color theory. I was captain of the varsity cravat team. Those are impressive credentials, Tom. Thomas. Well, later, dude.
What? What's going to happen later? Hey, keep your hands off that! Excuse me. Yes? Whoa, you're like George Washington. Very much like him, according to my wife, Mrs. Washington. My name's Hoagie. Like the sandwich? How quaint. Is it true about you and the cherry tree? Oh, yes, it's quite true. Why, I've cut down acres of cherry trees in my day. I bet you've lost it. You couldn't cut down a tree to save your grandmother. Lost it, have I? Why, I'd show you a thing or two if there were a cherry tree nearby. But as you can see, there isn't. I only cut down cherry trees. Family tradition, you understand, cherries only. There's nothing out there but cedar and kumquats. Excuse me. Yes? Cold enough for you? Cold? Why, you don't know the meaning of the word. I spent a winter at Valley Forge. Now that was cold. Why, my spit would freeze before it hit the ground. Cool. Extremely. Hey, keep your hands off that. It's a little cage with a canary in it, perched above a little lever. Huh. I don't want to. What's up? Later, dude. That would not be respectful. Besides, I might get caught. I don't wanna. I don't wanna. I don't wanna. 
I'd rather not. I'd rather not. So as soon as Hoagie gets that battery working, we're set. I'm afraid not. We still need a diamond for the main unit. And your friend in the future needs power too, if she's still alive. Alive? Get me out of here! I like trees and everything, but this one has got to go. Get away from that! Get away from that! Get away from that! No way! There's things in there that look like they've been there for years! Doesn't anyone ever clean this thing? Except for those beef squigglies, I got everything I want out of there. I'd rather not. Green! Bernard! What are you doing up here? Well, I couldn't stop Purple, and he's gonna go out and conquer the world, and, and I'm afraid of what he'll do if he catches me, if Dr. Fred doesn't find me first. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah. Hey! What's up, Bernard? <laughs>